The Rancor's Brothel presents... A Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Out of the abyss. Uh, the night passes. There's a change of the guard in the morning. Elvara? No, it wouldn't even be Elva- Elvara. It would be Asha coming to get you guys in the morning with a half dozen quagoths uh, leading you out, divvying you up into groups. Everybody roll a d6. Six. Two, six. Two, four. Two, and four. Um, the dwarf name? Marek. Marek. And Kira are on one work detail. Troy, you are with Stool and Topsy. Uh, Lucas, you're with two others. I don't even care who. Lucas has to go. Not get the because pizza. not because it's Lucas, but <laughs> you're on Team Red Shirt. Good job. <laughs> yep, it's fair. There you go. <laughs> you're with Darren Dill and Jim J- Darren Dill and Jim Jar. Uh, the yeah. others are taken elsewhere. Sorry, they they, Dillinger. <laughs> they were who again? One of them was the. One is the Quagoth, one is the the thief like um the Sfirth Nebula, the Deep Gnome. Okay. So we're working are we working in teams of two or three then? Yes. Okay. Do they unshackle us? No, they do not. You have you're chained between the collar and the cuffs, but you have a range of motion. Okay. It's not a whole lot, but you can work. Uh we'll say group one goes to the kitchen. That would be Matt and Cody. Sexist pigs. Troy, who did I say you were with? Uh, Stool and one of the twins. Topsy. Uh, the girl. Um, you guys will be... What did I write down? You can show us your notes. I could. Hey, go your own way, right? <laughs> Just you three are on Chamber Pots. Titles. Uh, Lucas, you and your two are on water detail. So... Just carrying buckets of water? Uh, actually pulling them up. Okay. Um, we will start with team one. What did I say? Kitchen detail? Kitchen duty? detail. Okay, yeah, you are, able to, you are able to figure out how many people are there. Uh, you know the 19 is right. You know 15 to 30 is closer to 30. Okay. Troy, you guys are on chamber pots. Wait, what you, are we making? Huh? <laughs> what are we making? Something with mushroom. <laughs> oh. Tool's not stool's not gonna like that. Is that is that offensive to Stool and his people? No, they don't they don't care. <laughs> oh well they, no. They eat dead humanoids all the time. <laughs> so if Stool dies, we can eat him. And that's okay. In okay. theory. Okay. Yeah, um might, might trip a little. Eat the guy whose spores like allow you to psychically talk to each other. See how that goes for if you. If he dies of natural causes, we can put him on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just imagine a pizza like 16 inch and then you lay him on the table he's the length of the table <laughs> like that, that stool's funeral they're like why does his casket look like a hoagie roll <laughs> well funny story Troy you get taken to all of these rooms you know that these two are guard towers actually let me make sure I can't tell what your Vienna sausage finger they're pointing at on that tiny screen I am not an asshole I could tell fairly well what you were talking about. No, no I am incorrect. Neither one of you could tell what it was because he told you a lie. Elite guard barracks, two levels in each stalactite. Lesser guard barracks, these three caverns. These two are barracks. This is the main, the, the dining hall. Waterfall. This down here is where the quagoths sleep. Uh, after you clean this out, you are nauseated for the rest of the night. I'm assuming nauseated is still a condition. I don't know. I don't think it is. Go with blinded, Sicken. then. Sicken. <laughs> Sicken, probably. Bar feet, rumbly tummies, is that still a condition? So did they just take us right out of the pen and then divide us immediately, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Um, God, they don't... Have... Poisoned. Call it poisoned. Yeah, the conditions aren't very fun. Um, did we have to go back through the guard tower to get to any of these places yeah. at all? Yes. Yes. You would have gone back through the first guard tower, back 
across another rope bridge to this walkway and over here to the main dining hall. Rope bridges, you say? Spider silk rope bridges. Hard for you guys to get across. Difficult terrain. Sure. Because it's sticky? And Uh, because it's swaying and, yeah. It doesn't seem to bother the drow. Now, did we happen to go through the guard tower that he said was two levels that uh, is where the armory was? Yes, in this... And that's right across from our pins. Yes, you can see a an access tunnel going up. And where the f*** is the way out? About 150 feet down. There's a tunnel. This is the tunnel that you came in. This is the tunnel that Shushar says will go towards Sloopadoop. Uh, Bupito says that this way will go uh, the land route to Gracklesthug. Gotcha. This way, nobody specifies anything this way. So no matter what, we have to go down. There's no cavern at this level where the stalactites are. No. We have to go down to the floor. It ends in a guard tower down here. It ends in a guard tower down here. Okay. Or a a guard post, not a tower. This is embedded more in the cavern. How far is Minzobrin's end from uh, Gaulgrim? They've got to be relatively close, right? I mean, all things considered. A week to ten days, probably. Okay. I mean, they were trying to turn it into a stronghold. Troy, you are taken into this stalactite. You enter in through a temple or shrine. uh, Very spider-centric. You're taken down two levels, and you you empty chamber pots in a very fancy bedroom and a less fancy bedroom down below. Okay. It's not specified who they belong to, but... It's it's the drow priestesses. One one drow priestess, the other is definitely a male's bedroom. Oh, really? Okay. I'm yeah. surprised that they let him sleep in the temple. Well, no, the very bottom level below the temple. Still, uh, just entering the temple, I think, is surprising that they let him enter the temple, to, even if he is sleeping on the lowest floor. Um, I don't like that the crane's all the way over there. It's annoying. It's all the way over there, and you can see that it takes at least two of the quagoths to operate it. Cool. What does Lucas and the red shirts learn? Anything? Very little. Uh, you gain a level of exhaustion. How how securely are we being watched? Uh, you're being jeered at and laughed at by guards. Okay. So there's there's no point where they're just walking around not quite paying attention. I mean, probably. What do you want to do? Anybody who wants to do anything, let me know. What do you think? I want to I, I, I wanna ensure that they are completely not paying attention um, and far far enough away. For what? I want to literally pick up literally a pebble and see if I can cast light on it to see if I can do magic out here. That will draw something a very light. tiny amount of light. Very, very tiny. That's not how light works. What do you mean? Why not? I cast it on something. Yes, you do. You'll cast it on a on a on a stone. Sure. That light is going to be almost blinding in this cavern. Oh, okay. I thought we were in a lit area. No. It is dimly lit. All right. <clears throat> Never mind. That's not something you would get away with. Sources of, uh, are there, what are the, so we're, I'm, we're cooking, right? Mm-hmm. What are the sources of fire to cook with? Are uh, we burning wood? Are we burning, yeah, you need to complain is it a you. magic fire? Would it? No, this would be Zerkwood uh, fueled. Okay. Mushroom. Yep. Who took herbalism? Me. I took alchemist kit. You would know quite a bit more about the mushrooms that are being used. Okay. You know that Zerkwood is a very large, very woody-stemmed mushroom. That's what they're burning for fuel. It's what the tables are built of. Um, Matt and Cody, you you see everybody come and go. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you're wanting to do while you are... Is it just Matt and I? Matt, you, and someone else. I don't remember who I said. You didn't say anything. You didn't say anybody. That's right. It was just the two of you. Yeah, just I'm, the two of us. I'm going to make the best damn mushroom goulash I know. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Um. Uh. 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 uh I need to exploit this situation. Absolutely, you do. Um. I haven't figured out how yet. Yeah, you though. didn't finish. What do I know about mu- the mushrooms? You know, I know, I know about the wood one. Yeah, you know about Zerkwood. Cody, you think, and I will tell him about mushrooms. Sure. I gotta exploit this cluster f- of power here. You have barrel stalks. A barrel stalk is a large cask-shaped fungus that can be tapped and drained of fresh water stored within it. 
Blue Cap, dubbed the grain of the Underdark. A blue cap is inedible, but its spores can be... Inedible? Inedible. But its spores can be ground to make a nutritious, bland flour. Bread made from blue cap flour is known as spore bread or blue bread. There is fire lichen, pale orange white in color. Fire lichen thrives on warmth, so it grows in regions of geothermal heat. Fire lichen can be grown and are ground and fermented into hot spicy paste, which is spread on spore bread or added to soups and stews. Ripple bark, a shelf like fungus that resembles a mass of rotting flesh. It is surprisingly edible. Though it can though it can be eaten raw, it tastes better roasted. Trilomac. Trilomac is a mushroom that grows to a height of four to five feet and has a broad gray green cap and a light gray stalk. The cap's leathery surface can be cut and cleaned for use in in making maps, hats, or scrolls. Uh the, the stalk can make a palatable food akin to bread. Water orb is a bulbous fungus that grows in shallow water. A mature water, water orb can be squeezed like a sponge, yielding a gallon of drinkable water and a pound of edible, if chewy, and somewhat tasteless food. And zerkwood, as we discussed. You've got all kinds of to play with. So none of that stuff is, like, poisonous, then? No, this is all edible fungus. Okay. Well, I imagine I was, the one that says it's inedible is probably um, poisonous. Well, yeah. I also have a proficiency in cook's utensils. Yes. Um, so can Matt and I like literally make like the best damn food out of what we have here? Absolutely. Um, make me an intelligence check with proficiency. Sorry, both add of us proficiency are just me. to it. Or look up in Xanathar's what? what got the tools. But I'm proficient in uh, cook's tools can do. You are. Well, I don't know if I actually have cook's tools with me or not. You are in a kitchen. So I'm not rolling anything? Are you proficient in cook's tools? I'm proficient with mushrooms. You're helping. You give him advantage on the aid. I'm a special big boy. It's shaking back, and I help. (laughs) Actually, actually, since you are the herbalist, I will give you double the proficiency bonus. Boom. Okay. Tools, alchemists, brewers, cartographers, cook's utensils. Oh, can I just cast guidance on him? It's verbal and somatic only. Try it. Uh, <laughs> are we watched in the kitchen? I would assume so. I mean, we are cooking you are their ha- food. You are cooking their food and handling sharp implements. Okay, so I will not attempt. Uh, creating a gourmet <laughs> meal, by the way, is DC 15. I will give you dex or intelligence. So roll with advantage then? With advantage and double proficiency bonus. If I can do my math right, that's a 21. That's a damn good meal. Um, perchance Jorlin around for this meal. Are we actually serving them? It would probably be like a lunch line. Okay. So I don't have, uh... Cafeteria Lady uh, right. Kira. Yes. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that means I don't have hardly any time to say anything. No, no, I want I want to talk to him. Um... I'm just serving. Uh, as, <laughs> I, as I notice him... Yes? I will, I will slop, I, you know, I'll slop... Whatever it is, you know, preparing the meal. Slide it over and say, uh, help me out of here. I'll make it worth your while. Shut up, Iblith. Fine. Don't want to know things. That's all right. Call the Grim. Plenty of things. Plenty of things you could take advantage of in the Underdark. Your choice. Enjoy your meal. And as I'm serving them, I'm just like, have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. Yeah. <laughs> Try the fire like in jelly. It's delicious. Lucas, yep. you will get a chance to go down to the main cavern floor. Uh, you guys will load up barrels full of water uh, between you and the Quagoth. Uh, you can get them back to the cage. The drow will keep you from getting too far into the water because there is an ooze. Do I know what an ooze is? Yes, yes, you would know what an ooze is. Lucas doesn't know what an ooze is. There's a gray ooze somewhere in the pool. It so lives that, down there, didn't and it's been. What a news! <laughs> I'm, Please tell him the I'm getting there. Is it like <laughs> from, tell, tell from the dark side where they're stuck on that raft in the middle of the lake. Never seen it. Shut um, the f- up. There is a gray ooze. It's it lives in the pool. It's normally pretty. It it doesn't mess with anybody unless it gets unless they get too far out sure. into the. It's been acting up lately. Don't go too far out. Can you please explain what an ooze is? An it's ooze, long, right? Yeah, kind of. Depending on what kind of ooze it is, um, this is a gray ooze. It looks kind of like an uh, an oil slicked rock. Okay. 
or it can look like an oil slicked rock. Do or, I know what they can do? Uh, they f- can melt your face off. Yeah, usually acid damage. And okay. Jor- Jorlan was half. He said he got hit with a nose. Right. All scarry. Well, yes, I, he, I don't know that. But he, he said it. The mushroom <laughs> said it too. Did the mushroom? Mushroom didn't tell me that. Uh, it was discussed during the telepathic conversation. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, as they after they talk about the ooze down there, they will the guards will talk back and forth amongst themselves, and you can overhear them talking about how Jorlin ran into a gelatinous cube, and it was a sh- it was a raw deal, and he's gotten screwed since he came back. And he's the drow that's in prison with us. No, uh, he's the one with the scars, the one who greeted you, the one who used to be Ilvara's. Uh, Second. Gotcha. Well, he, the main male in charge okay. of the other males. So it was a gelatinous cube, not a news. A gelatinous cube is a news. Is it's one type like of news shape. Anybody else want to do anything? I mean, I do. I'm just doing. I'm just uh, doing my best to ensure that we get put on food duty tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna take the leftovers and take seconds around to the drow, offering refills. It's not a bad idea. Okay, so you're taking. The yeah. the pot of stuff around offering Yeah, something. make sure, you know, waste not, want not, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. You doing anything while you're doing that? No, just... Cool. Smile for I everybody. Anything from the dessert menu for you? I mean, if I see that he's getting away with that, then I will go pass out water. Something, you know. If we can move amongst the drow while they're eating, I feel like I might have an opening to converse a little bit more. But I did not know if that was going to be allowed. Yeah, it's not like you're surrounded by him or anything. Right, yeah. Because, yeah, I, I, like I said, I want to pick at Jorlin a little bit, unless any of the others are here, because I can always pick up one of the other ones, too. Uh, the, the priestesses would would not eat with the males. Right. Uh, Shore would probably be there at one point or another. And what is his demeanor? Do I read, uh, is there he, anything I read from off of him? Cocky as hell. He just got bumped up the line because of somebody else's bad luck. He is happy as a pig in You're right. Um... Um, I'll go over and refill whatever sort of drink that they're serving. Um, can I get you a bit more, sir? Here you go. Keeping my eyes downcast the entire time. Yeah, he doesn't even, he doesn't even respond. He will. I hope you enjoy your meal, sir. Accidentally spill a little on his lap and wipe it off. Any. (laughs) Vigorously. (laughs) Any, any, anything you need, sir. I don't want to, I don't want to go back to the hard labor. He will slap it out of your hand. Worth a shot. And raise hell with you about about spilling the wine or whatever it was. Okay. I will act cowed. Yeah. You're you're an idiot. You're lucky you're not being beaten. Clean it up. Oh, absolutely. Right away. I mean cleaning it up. Does he have a house badge? Who? Uh sure. Sure? Uh no. Okay. Is he carrying any weapons on him? Yeah. Uh Anything basic? He's not wearing anything strange. Uh, you can make a perception check. Sure, why not? Fifteen. Very nice armor. Uh, you don't see a house symbol, but you do see a a very nice cloak. Okay. Uh, you see the handle of a wand protruding from his belt. Okay. And are there particular guards watching over us? Like this, I imagine two people or three people or whatever are watching over us the whole time. Uh, it would probably change. People will, there would be two or three that were tasked with watching you. Somebody would get done eating and replace them. Gotcha. And at some point I'll, I'll ask one of them about, uh, if we need to take any of this food anywhere else. Uh, we'll slop the quagoths. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming someone will take it to the priestesses, yeah? Uh, sure, we'll be taking the priestesses their dinner. I'll go, so I'll go slop them quagoths then. All right. I don't have a plan at the moment. I mean, I yeah. sort of have a plan brewing, but... I'm just making us indispensable. That's fair. I'm going to follow your lead. I, I think that that would be great. I think keeping us in the kitchen would be a good thing. Okay. No other plans at the moment, just trying to figure it out. Okay. You guys will take whatever's left of dinner and probably a couple of carcasses of whatever they could catch and give it to the quagoths. Gotcha. Just down in that last cavern down there. So they we walk it down there? Yes. And are we, I'm assuming that we are escorted? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any sources of fire that I can see anywhere? Absolutely not. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Anybody anything else? Otherwise, you're back in the cell for the rest of the night. 
Yeah, go do the dishes and go to the cell. Anything during the night? Yeah, we gotta, um, so we gotta get out, we need to get weapons, and we need to get down. Like, those are the three basic things we have to do. Um, fire would be a great distractor. So far, I'm only seeing one source of fire, unless anyone else has seen it anywhere today. I mean, Troy's cleaning chamber pots. The only source of fire that we have at all is in the kitchen. Would fermented fire lichen burn? No. It's just spicy. Spicy. Okay. Um, Because you had spicy, you had burny, and did you have anything else, Matt? I listened to some of it, but I didn't get all of it. I mean, the one that burns, wood one, uh, water, flour, fermented uh, sauce, and a couple of edibles, one that makes papery stuff. Papyrus I wrote. Um, because we could definitely, uh, <clears throat> if Shore takes the meals to them, we could definitely overspice the priestess's meals, which might distract them. Um, but I'm still thinking about the easiest, one of the easiest things I think we could do is, do I know naturally how well spider silk burns? Yes. You totally would, right? You I, totally would. Yes. I would assume so. I assume it burns like a mother. Troy, I didn't give you much detail other than what the layout was. I have a question. Yes. These guys worked in a kitchen. What was their source? What was their source of heat to cook with if it wasn't he fire? He said fire. He said fire. Yeah, so did a, you have a there's fire? A, there's right. a stove. He's, right. Yeah, he asked if there was fire on the way to the Gamagoths. Okay, sorry. Yeah, there there would have been a cook fire or a stove. The thing is, is, if Matt and I, on our way out of the kitchen can set that bridge on fire, you might reduce the number of enemies we have to face by 15 to 20 immediately. Right. Um, assuming that's the only bridge. It's connecting to where the... It's not assuming, it's a map. Yeah, the, where those ass are, absolutely. There are three bridges. One connecting from your cell over to the stalactite, one from the stalactite back to the next walkway, and one over to the shrine and priestess. Where's the kitchen? Here. Oh, my bad. I thought you were over here. No, that's one of those things. This is the Quagoths. This is you. Right. But everybody basically went to work on that side. Because if we can get a source of fire, and we can go out to... Where's the first bridge here? The bridge going here. Yeah. I'm just wondering where we can cut them off at. Because it'd be great to set, like... If we could set a couple... It seems like we could set a strategic bridge off fire. We could cut off half the camp. You Am could. I looking at that correctly? You could. But our weapons are stored here, we think. Okay. Right. Well, that's what they said. This is this is the... The armory is upstairs in this stalactite. I'm making sure it's this one and not this one. Because this is, is the this, priestess. This is the priestess and the shrine. Uh, did Troy see any other armaments that way? Of Just you, the barracks. You said you were going to give me more description. I was. But Cody kept going. I just keep asking questions, <laughs> man. Okay. Uh, in the shrine... What's your passive perception? That's what I'm trying to look up. That's just 10 plus... 10 plus perception. perception. Okay, so I have two. 14. 14. You would have noticed movement in the shrine. Uh, you would have seen Asha there. It looks like she lives there, but back among the cushions and things where she sleeps, you would have seen something skittering around back there. Damn it. Something skittering around like a spider. Like a big f***ing spider. Uh, you would have seen... Various ritual implements, maybe a wand laying out, things like that in the shrine. Down in Ilvara's chamber, you'd have seen uh, lots of fancy uh, A chest. Actually, you'd have seen a chest down in Shore's chamber, too. So for the most part, when we get up in the morning, we get marched across the bridge to the guard tower. Yes. Then get marched from the guard tower over to... Basically, we all go south there, right? To, to I mean, because that's where most of the camp is. To another walkway, yes. That's when we have to make our move. Because that's theoretically when we're all together. If we can make our move while in the guard tower, we could be armed immediately. Because I think the only other option is to come out of the kitchen, burn the bridges, and then run like hell, but then we don't have any weapons. But they are all leading all 15 of us at one time, yeah? Yes. You're all let out at once, and you're divvied up over here. So we're not divvied up until we get to that point. Yes. How many guards uh, are watching us from cell to guard tower across rope bridge to main camp? Half a dozen would would frog march you through the camp. Uh, there's two here in the 
guard post. There's three in here stationed in the in the first stalactite. And from here over, there's the six that are guiding you. Gotcha. But once we go in the guard tower, then the post loses visibility on us, right? Once you cross this bridge into the stalactite, yes. Okay. And we know that that's multi-level. Yes. Okay. As you pass through it, you can see a hatch going up. But we so we don't know what's up there, though. Troy didn't go up there. There weren't any chamber pots, nothing to clean. Nope. So it's pure supposition. Do we know which one of these drow was carrying the keys to our shackles? No. I don't know that they have keys. Like, do they have keyholes? Well, yes. Like, they do? Okay. Was, uh... uh hey... Hey, Stool, buddy, can I ask you a question? (laughs) Hey, do your spores do anything else? No, they just let me communicate. That's it? Really? I mean, they let him communicate, but, like, he was pulling information out of Lucas's head. That's more flair than anything. Um, Strike. There's two very different mindsets between some, between, uh, you're an, you're an asthma, but a normal person thinking and the mind of a plant. That typically grows in a, you know, I know. communal there, way. Yeah, there's a two very different kinds of societies. There's a hive mind thing going on. Okay. Um. So, jump them in the guard tower. Um. I'll kind of, uh, when we get back there, I'll kind of look at Jim Jar and then kind of point at, you know, the manacles and be like, take those off too? Because he was talking about how he could open the door, but he didn't explain how he could open the door. He didn't say open the door, he said he could get us out. I assume he would do that by opening the door, but he specifically said that he could door. get you through the door. Okay. Yeah, I could probably do it. I haven't tried yet because I didn't want to be seen trying. It's fair, and it's not like I've got my tools. I know I could get through one lock. I don't know how long what I've got would last. I look at the orc and ask him, you know, how how tough are these? Can you break them? I don't think I could. And we've seen no key whatsoever. No. Neither have any of the other 11 individuals. No. I mean, the problem is that drow typically knock you out and take you prisoner. Uh, By the time you wake up, you're shackled. Yeah. And there's no need for them to show you a key because they don't ever plan to unshackle you. But do they use a key to unlock our gate door to get us out of that cage? Yes. And that person doesn't have an assortment of keys? Like you want, like... No, I doubt it. Normal. I mean, what else would they lock? The shackles. Why? You're assuming humane treatment. Mm-hmm. You're not getting that. No, that's I'm not. I'm assuming that if there's a key to a door, there's a key to the shackles too. Sure. Why wouldn't they be on the same key ring? Because why would you put them anywhere near remotely where you would ever, where the prisoners would ever find them? You would only do that if you intended to unmanacle the prisoners, which they never have done. I'm assuming everyone else is sh- suffering from like weeks of chafing from these things because they've never taken them off. All right. Like I said, again, you're assuming humane treatment, which you're not getting from drow. Um, they only come off when you die. Yeah, pretty much. If there is a key, it may be up in the tower. That's the thing. Do we want to gamble everything on jumping them in that room and hoping we can find everything we need in that room? Because if we jump them, even if we're able to do it relatively quietly, we're not going to have much time. It'd be great if we could get him the tools he needs to unlock us. What do you need? A fucking straight fark or something? All I've got right now is a couple shards of bone that I've been able to collect. Did anybody see anything on any of their whatevers? I mean, Matt and I would probably be the only ones where we could get something that would help him lockpick. What about... Hey, is an ooze like... Can you get part of it off of it? Or is it like a being? It's a being. It's a being. Okay. You're not going to be... The only thing you're going to be... The little sponge mushroom, like, glob up some... Ooze, and let's, you know. Put some fire mushroom stuff in their eyes. No, 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 the acid on the um, cuffs. Oh. That assumes that you can get Transport it to, it. Get it to cooperate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fire <laughs> stuff. not eat you. Like, your, your, your fire lichen or your fire mushroom cap or whatever it is could be a really useful tool, but I feel like we're going to be better if we're, I would rather take 15 against 8 than you and me versus... 12 or 15 and trying to coordinate a multi-level attack. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just trying to prison yard smuggling. I don't think thing. you want to put spicy stuff in your butt. Not the spicy stuff. I want the acid. <laughs> I don't think you want to put acid in your butt either. 
Um, so unless anyone else has any other ideas, that's the best that I've got now, unless we want to go through another day or two or week of being prisoners. Are we aware that the three places we went, are there, how many other places are there possible for us to work that are different? There's general cleaning detail. Pretty much anything else you're going to be doing is just work for them to be able to laugh at you. I mean, they they, so, they genuinely take glee in having you do menial tasks that aren't actually doing anything and then kicking over your work and telling you to do it again. Stool mentioned that he worked in tunnels. What did he do in the tunnels? What do you mean? What was he doing in the tunnels? In which tunnels? I'm sorry. I'm I not- don't know. Stool said that he worked in tunnels. What did he do in the tunnels? He said, if you get into the tunnels with me. He didn't say he worked in tunnels. He said, if you get in the tunnels, I can the tu- Yeah, the tunnels leading out. I assumed he said he was working in the tunnel. Every no. Every time you say assume part of it, so it does. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. Bananas. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that if we wait until we split up, that's not going to be very effective. We're going to have trouble because there's no way we don't end up fighting these f- priestesses. I don't see any way. Unless we try and poison their meal. What, though? Super spicy hot sauce. If they've got the flaming poops, they're going to have trouble concentrating on their spells. Do they lead us all back to the cage at the same time? Now, at that point, though, somebody's going to be poisoned and exhausted. Is there, um... We're freshest first thing in the morning. Is there any glass? Pitchers? Um... Wine? Carafts? That kind of thing? No, I don't... I don't know that there would be a whole lot of glass. Can you get metal shavings off of? Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe not poison, but if we put something... You know, put powdered glass in somebody's food, it they'll die. <laughs> You should know what herbs are poisonous. Are you assuming that? No. <laughs> okay. You should know what herbs do. Did you read that in the book? I'm an alchemist. I know what I can do with alchemy. You're an herbalist. You know what you can do no, with no, herbs. It's in Xanathar's. Yeah, I have to pee, but it's you should look at Xanathar's because if we could poison them, that might be another strategy entirely. Yeah. Lucas, you should look up alchemy. <sighs> yes, I'd like to know what Lucas can do with alchemy. Like oh. perhaps create firebombs that we can set on fire with. Namely I'm bridges. working with water. I'm not going to be able to do much with that. And the news, they will mix you up tomorrow. How do they keep the umlauts in check? The what? Oh, uh, whatever the hell. The... Oh, quagoths? Yeah. Uh, they beat them in the submission. Are they beasts? They are They are intelligent. Okay. And are they surface dwell? No. No. They are underdark. It's really inelegant, but it's a plan. I don't like it. But you could jump them in the guard tower. Isn't that what we were just talking about? Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Is it unless you want to unless you want to play out being prisoner for a few more days and see if we can learn anything else? That's the other thing. Is it's either you. If go, there's anything else we can learn over the course of a couple of days, sure. But I'm not sure that we will. I'm sure there's plenty of shit we can learn. We could eventually turn the f-ers against each other, but it's going to take time. If you can get those other things to rise up against them, that's what I'm saying. Depends Plus, on what you want to do. Can you communicate with them though? They're intelligent, so yeah. Right, but we don't know what they speak. Speak don't we? Daredevil have... will say they speak under common. Okay, so some of us or one of us can speak with them, right? Two of us. I mean, a good persuasion check might do it. I don't know. Um, it might. Are they? So are they worked alongside then? Like, do they work alongside with it? What do they do here? Uh, they do a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, they work as guards. Are they ever our guards? Yes. All the time. Intermixed with the drow. Um, they're the bitch workers, right? Now, w- there's not a quagoth in our cell, is there? There's or one, the- Darren there's- one. yeah. But he thinks he's an elf. Yes, but he knows that he looks like a quagoth. He's an elf who was polymorphed into a quagoth, according to him, right? Yeah, you've not said that's what he's telling you, right? Uh, because he would be one that would be able to potentially get them to riot. Um, maybe I don't know, or at least maybe get them not to fight us, which would be better. Yeah. Um, it's possible. I mean, they, they know that I am a prisoner. They, I couldn't intermix with them and not be known. So why don't we spend the course of the next day or two trying to convince them to do that? Well, I don't think that, I don't think it's going, it's going to be something in the moment. I don't think that you're going to just be able to convince them to do a thing. Like, I don't think a riot is something that you persuade over the next two days. I think that a riot needs to be spawned. The quick if you want it to be well planned. <laughs> what the, if, um, the, pro- the problem with the Quagoths is that this has been bred into them. They are 
they have been bred to be a slave race. What if somebody with telepathy walking past Quagoth, who's near Drow, says in a good Drow voice in their head, you know, to the point that maybe they think it was whispered or something, that, you know, look at that hairy bitch over there or something. I, antagonizing. I turn to, what's the Drow's name? Sarath. Sarath. Is getting beat within an inch of your life worth it? That depends on who's doing the beating and why. I turn and look at the Quagoth or whatever it is. I think it's this bastard. I look at the Quagoth. Do you speak under common? Yes. Now I think we have a plan. Are any of the guards that escort us Quagoths? When yes. We How many? It varies. Is it exclusively a bitch Quagoth job? I assume not. They would never let the Quagoths and the Drow... You know, like, the the drow are there just to supervise. Yeah. Yes. So it's probably, like, one or two drow and four quagoth. Sure. Um, we don't need all of them, but if we can get a few of them, if we can start a riot, it may require you to be beat within an inch of your life, maybe thrown from a stalactite, but I'm sure you can figure out the webbing on the way down, right? Why do I need to be beaten? Well... It all depends on how... So, I, I guess the guard escort part is the thing that I've got to get figured out. So, they march us in. Frog marches in. I was looking for an example. But the drow may not need to be it if we've got at least some drow guard. I say we get into the guard tower. We attack only the drow, not the quagoth. We have to convince this guy, who says he's an elf, to convince the quagoths that he's a quagoth. And that they should rise up against the drow. They all think I'm mad. They they think I'm a quagoth. All right. Well, do you think you can speak persuasively enough to get a few of them behind you, if not all of them? I don't know. Well, we jump everyone, not the quagoths, beat the hell out of the drow. Jim Jar gets us out of these. We get upstairs. We get armed. You get the quagoths behind you. We set fire to this place and we run like hell. It's the best plan I've got so far. I kind of like glass in their food. <laughs> it's a good way to slow them down before we do that. But they'll die of internal injuries. It'll be great. Slowly. Darren Dill is happy to help with any plan that gets him the hell out of here. Oh, I'm sure they all are. Yes. I'm looking at the other three PCs around the table to see if anyone has any input. So, I mean, sounds like a plan. I don't... I don't know everyone's abilities. My ability is restricted until I get something with a pointy end. Um, So, if anyone has anything magic-related, maybe, that would be helpful... Perhaps in the planning of well, this. he can't do magic. In this within room. Within the cage. But he implied I probably couldn't do it otherwise. He asked you. You. You inferred. Because you don't have your... your you, were, you were surrounded in the dining hall oh. by 90% of the male drow in this camp. Okay. And you wanted to wave your arms and verbally cast a spell. Well, oh, I can heal us. It's fine. I just don't know what the rest of the party can do, so I don't know if I can... Hey, if I cast Detect Poison, <coughs> could I find poison that way? Like, I can't, can't... Instead of just trying to detect it in my food, like, can I just use, like, a dowsing rod? I don't think that's the way For Detect what? Poison works. I know, I'm just asking the DM if he was benevolent. <laughs> I mean, what are you trying to do with it? Put it in their food. He's trying to see if he can detect it and then put it in their Although food. Although we're not going to be... We're not going to be on food detail tomorrow. You're going to you. You would have to make poison from something. Um, it's not something that they keep jars of in the kitchen. Well, what about the inedible? It's by the mayonnaise. What about the inedible inedible thing? The blue cap. The outer husk is inedible, and the spores on the inside are ground into flour. Yeah, by inedible, you mean like you literally can't bite into it, or because it's poisonous? No, it's not poisonous. Like this table's inedible. It's like but also strychnine. It's like orange peel is inedible. No, it's edible. Do you, you put eat it? You put orange zest in anything. That's not you the peel. You cranberry relish? That's not That's the, the rind. Peel. Yes, it is. Um, so are you going to spend a couple more days doing this, or would you like to jump them in the guard tower? I'm asking because I don't have any spells. I can't do f*** all until I get a weapon. I have plenty of things. Right. Anything that helps in this current plan. I mean, I can hurt things. Would I know that... Uh, I don't have anything... So the, this place is arcanely lit, right? Yeah. By what? Like, is it the light cantrip that keeps it? What keeps it lit? Um, Roll Arcana. 16. 
it would probably be a permanent spell with like a continual or a continual flame spell. And it's dim. Yeah, it's so dim as light. not to hurt their eyes. Yes. Is light bright enough to hurt their eyes? No. Yes. No. Two I DMs see. disagree. Right. I think it would be because very it's, surprising it's and should it would be, be quite nice. Bright light flashing when it hits, well, right? Light is equivalent to a torch. Okay, I could do guiding bolts. Okay. Daylight would be okay. Okay. Well, we'll hold that for whatever the priestesses have creepy crawling around. I got sacred flame. Um, there's only verbal and somatic. That night, as everybody's laying down, getting some sleep, getting ready for whatever you guys are planning the next day, Jorlin comes and relieves the guards. <laughs> Fair enough. And he will have a little conversation with you. With all of us? Or just Kira? He will motion for Kira over to the door. Yeah. Because Kira's the one who talk, who tried to talk to him earlier. Sure. What do you think you're doing? Trying to survive. You run off secrets, right? Information. Power. Yeah. It depends on one's situation. Right. I've got no power. I'm trying to use whatever leverage I have to survive. See, I'm not in that situation. I... Well, I am in that situation. I have lost almost all of the power that I had. Is information worth anything? Information that might get you in power. My situation is going to deteriorate more and more. And I know that. The, the, only, the only power or satisfaction that I have to look forward to is wiping that smug look off of Shure's face. And getting a little bit of spite against Ilvara for spurning me. Jealousy. I like it. Sometimes it's all you've got to hang on to. You may not be able to win, but you might as well watch the others lose. And exactly. You do think like a drow. <laughs> Can he see her teeth clench in the dark? Because <laughs> he does. Um, and it's not a smile. It's a grimace of pain because she wants to stab him. If you can get out, it's the black eye that I would be looking for for her. If you can make sure look bad on your way out, that would be even better. I'll clear your way. I will even give you a way to get out of the cell. What you do from here is up to you. Fair enough. I really don't trust him, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, surely, surely... I mean, at, at this point, we could say that you guys are telepathically linked and you guys could converse while this is going on. Like, can we hear that conversation? Well, oh, yeah. To you could totally convey this to everybody. Jeff is implying that perhaps we're constantly under the spores, which allows you guys the kind of... <laughs> I mean, of, I did make know. him say something, so he boofed. Yeah, well, yeah, but I think that the idea is that that way, if you have any input, because I don't trust the drow. Um, I mean, quashing an uprising could also play into his hands as well. Yeah. I don't know that that's enough to get him back in good graces. Well, you could put glass in everybody else's food, but his... I don't know where this glass is coming from, and yeah, we're going to have time either. to ground it and put it in people's food. Without being noticed by the people who guard us. Yeah. You know, I feels... go off from a little, uh, little dwarf ass. You know, and <laughs> while I'm doing that, you uh, <laughs> go ahead and... Do you little... understand how drought work? I, I mean, do they have penises? Do I don't think they have a thing Nick for dwarves. Nick Fleetwood is an attractive man, <laughs> even at his age. Um, But surely you... Surely if someone's going to be given the black eye, you'd rather do it yourself, yeah? Mm, okay, maybe you don't think like a drow. Huh. Cat's paws are even better. That way I don't have to get my hands dirty. Fair enough. Say I could make sure that he's a bit incapacitated, but, you know, you don't want to fight him in a duel. I thought the drow liked to do that, but perhaps not. Well, A, I'm not in much shape to fight. I can ensure he's not either. Maybe. And how would you be doing that? Did you enjoy the food this evening? That was an excellent dinner. You know, one of the best we've had for a while around here. I telepathically say, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we can make it just as someone who can make something really, really good can also make something really bad. Something that could make someone sick, make someone weak, make someone have the sh**. It's all about timing, of course. Maybe not right away, but 45 minutes later, an hour later, someone uh, running for the latrine may not be uh, quite as strong and as powerful to fight as... Might think he is. Mm, I don't think that I will be doing that. Just a thought. 
Well, I have a personal grudge against Ilvara and against Shore. I don't have a personal grudge against every other drow in this camp. Oh, no, it wouldn't be to all of them. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> what good is it going to do if you're all running for sh- running to shit? I'm still going to be uh, locked up in manacles. The rest of them talk about you. So what do you guys want to do? Question I'm beginning to ask. Because of my relationship, would I know or would Avar and I know one another at all? I doubt it. I mean, you may have known of her, but I don't think you would have known her. Okay. Do we want to trust him enough to think that he's going to actually aid us in some way getting out of here? I don't see a lot of other options. If he's not going to be our cat's paw, then we're going to have to be his cat's paw. I mean, he's saying he, he can unlock the door. If we if we can also ensure a way to get to the armory, obviously that gives us a big help and would we could be... Yeah, but I can't imagine. I mean, I guess it would look bad against her. But if we do this, then we're going to face the full might of the camp. Of that, I have no doubt. It doesn't alter our plans any. It just now he knows about it. He's not going to be any in any capability to fight us, but would he if he turned... See, there's no advantage for him, though. Unless he strikes some sort of critical blow against us. Well, he wouldn't want to leave us alive because we wouldn't know of his deceit. He doesn't care. We're beneath him. No, we would be able to rat him out. To who? As, if we, we, listen. as if we would we would be believed. Well, no. Who the f*** are we going to talk to? No, if, I meant if he like was trying to look cool and... You know, as no, I think I think he. I think it's much more likely that he is using us as a cat's paw. I think we'll die, but he wants us to try and you know make her look bad before we die. Even losing slaves would be problematic. I think we just have to make this uprising significantly bigger than he thinks it is. Give me until tomorrow night. Do not act before tomorrow night. And why is that? So that I can arrange guards. She won't respond. I'll just move away from the door. Okay. As you're walking away, you hear a tink, 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 tink as something hits the floor behind you. And it is? You see two picks. Hmm. I'll, uh, man. Two little lock picks. Right. Tomorrow night, be ready to move. All right, so you want to go tomorrow night? You want to go in the morning? Yeah, the trusted sky, you don't. Yeah, I mean, but also, I don't know the habits of drow, like, are... Obviously, we're underground, so like really night and day doesn't really mean anything, but like, is nighttime a better time to try to escape, or is daytime? I mean, I, I, think, I think we go loud, personally. I mean, I think that you cause a ruckus. Yeah, if we go in the morning, okay, if we use the two lockpicks that are like actual lockpicks, right, we pick everybody's manacles, leave them on so that they look like they're, like we're cuffed, you know, the old Wookiee surprise... I mean, I don't think we have to do that. I think we get into the tower where we're not seen. We jump the drow guards that we have. Yeah. We use what's his face to try and incite a riot. After we get un, we get unmanacled. We get our weapons. We pitch some drow off the edge and try and use the umlaut to raise up the other umlaut, and then we all run for the f-ing door. Well, follow me on this, okay? We do the manacle. We, we we all get our manacles off before morning, okay? We have deniability from Jaren, or what was it? Jorlin. Jorlin. Because if he's expecting us to help at night, then we can always point the finger that he gave us the lockpicks and cause no issues. One's gonna, no one's going to believe that. Okay, but they're not going to believe that we pulled them out of thin air either. We got them from somewhere. Anyway, that's only if we got caught. <clears throat> we have a drow, and we have a umlaut. We jump our guards as quietly as possible in the cell. I assume we're under watch, though. Do the redress thing, you know, and then they lead us out. And as we're going through the guard tower to get to where we need to go, we jump them, we can get our shit, and we can roll. It's essentially the same plan. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather go in the morning, even if he does know we have them, because yeah. I think the chances are is that While they'll, we're find all together. The, they'll find the lockpicks. I mean, I think it's entirely possible that they'll find the lockpicks. But we will be going against the strength of the camp first thing in the morning. Yeah. So we're going to unlock our manacles... Now or later? I don't think there's any sense to do it now. I mean, there's more than enough size in this party, I think, to take two drow and just slam them into the wall as soon as we... Two or three drow. The question is what the... Um, I keep forgetting the name of them. Quagoths. I keep wondering what the Quagoths are going to do. That's where I think that the polymorphed elf has to tell them, chill out. like Or rise up. 
Well, yes, but let's let's be quiet about it until I have a weapon in my hand. Sure. This is me playing devil's advocate. You don't know where your is. It's true. But we only know of one room. The other characters think that this is a bad idea. Sarath will tell you that this is this is suicide. Um, Does Sarah think we should trust Jorlin? Uh, well, for one, if you're thinking about trusting a dark elf, you don't know dark elves. Um, but he has something to gain by doing this. I wouldn't think that he is doing this in your interest at all, but he doesn't have anywhere to go. Um, he's right. His, his position is gone. He can't rise in the ranks. The only thing that he has left is getting a little bit of revenge. But if he's wanting us to get a black eye, then he's expecting for us to have a big fight. He's no, not just, sneaking us out of here. He insinuated that he would clear the way. He was arranging guards. I... Kira doesn't want to trust the Dark Elf, but Kira's one vote. I get that. How you guys want to play it? I'm good either way. I mean, if they're not going to fight with us, we're then only three against 30, or 40, or I think there are 60. Close to 50. The hard part is, is I don't know that we can get down without slaughtering most of this drow camp anyway. Because you're saying it takes two of the umlauts to... uh. I'm never going to remember what the Quagoths or whatever it is. It's going to take two Quagoths to even get it to go down, right? It's more for hauling back up. You can get to go down pretty easy. Oh, okay. I guess gravity will take, uh, we'll do some of that work for us. Like I said, Kira's vote, regardless of whether it's intelligent or not, is to go in the morning. As soon as we get in the guard tower, get armed as best we can, run for the elevator, pray like hell they don't have driders <laughs> or any other bizarre, horrible things. See, you know, I like that idea, too. The problem is, is, if they're not going to fight with us, we are pretty well f Oh, I think if they do fight with us, we're still pretty well f but... Yeah, but at least we have 11 other bodies on our but side. But if we all die, we ruin Jeff's campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we'll um, all get to have... Let's make, sure we, let's make sure we hide the lockpicks, like, covered in dirt somewhere in the cell, so that when we have our new characters next session... <laughs> I'm pretty sure the NPCs are going to do whatever we say to do. It's just their input. So that's why I'm curious as to the input of the other two people at the table. Because I only have one character sheet in front of me. I only know what I can do. Let's do it. All right. F it. We'll do it live. Good luck, Jeff. Our title track, Elders, is brought to you by Sleep for the Weary off their debut album, Nocturnes. Learn more about Sleep for the Weary at sleepfortheweary.com or by following the link on our homepage at rancorsbrothel.com. Enjoy the cards used during the podcast? Check out those and many other excellent Nord Games products at nordgamesllc.com. Tell them the Rancor's Brothel sent you. Want to support the podcast? Donate to the cause at patreon.com slash rancors underscore brothel. Patrons receive exclusive content, the opportunity to play games with us, the chance to win unique prizes, and more. And don't forget to join in the conversation on Facebook by following the Rancor's Brothel and joining the group, Fans of the Rancor's Brothel. Follow us on Twitter at at rancors underscore brothel and email your comments and suggestions to between two crits at gmail.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Much love, listeners. You listen.